<laughs> Hello YouTube, this is Gauntlet Food and Games here with our second place uh, person for our local tournament. Tell us what you ran today, sir. Uh, I ran Broly Apes. I'm oh, sorry, hold on. What? I ran Broly Apes. Interesting. Was there a reason that you decided to do this? Uh, it just seemed like a very fun idea. Okay. Uh, running the yellow Broly for the quick awakening and, um, of course, the quick draw and then, of course, the aggro that he can perform is just... It was suitable for a leader, and plus he's a yellow leader, so it Seems worked fair. out pretty well. Yeah. Um, onto the battle cards, I run three of the nine drop Broly Explosive Wrath. Playing the promo Broly's. Any reason why? Uh, the nine drop had an incredible ability to where uh, on the active main I can pitch one yellow card and then choose one of my opponent's card in rest mode and send it to the drop area. It was Ooh. really, as long as they have three or more energy. And it was really nice to slow down, like, the Red Gogeta down a turn, because I can send one of their energy away, prevent them from going to the six-drop Gogeta. Right. This deck loses really hard to aggro. Mm. And with a double strike, it was also pretty nice. Uh, we got the seven-drop Broly. He was mainly here just for the, um, the other active main to send one card from my hand to the drop and prevent a rest mode card from switching to active mode to the end of your opponent's next turn. And then sometimes I selected an energy depending if I was facing against Janimba Ooh. or I selected a, their leader <laughs> so they couldn't Gee. mill me. I kept selecting their leader so their leader couldn't come and smack me. And this is the card that was the main winner of the game which was the Paralyzing Presence, which could stop battle cards from switching to active, but the main reason why I ran them is for the tournament. As long as me or my opponent in between have three cards in rest mode in total. So if he had two cards and I rested my leader for an attack, it counted, and his energy cost would go down to two, which was basically perfect for Shigesh to drop him for free. plays, absolutely. On to the apes. I uh, didn't see this. But it was a good option. Was two uh, Prince Vegeta. Why just two? Um, in case I didn't see my Bardock early, or in case uh, I actually got March of the Great Eights out, he was a critical blocker. Really nice. Didn't see him though. I saw Bardock will irons more than anything. Of course. The double striker blocker is way too way too good for his own good. Mm -hmm. uh, of course. Because I'm running Bardock, I'm also running Bardock the Priganator, and then uh, one of the uh, Power Charge Bardock. Got it. Any particular reason why? Because uh, I'm also doing Swap in this deck quite a bit, and um, he's really a good option for when I attack. My opponent negates him. I'm not going to get the double strike, so I get, get the free draw anyway. But if my opponent's low on hand, the double strike comes in handy in case I can't do. In case I can't do the Will of Iron. No need help from the Peanut Gallery. Plus a good Shigash target. Uh, King of Vegeta. Ooh, just one and one. Just one and one. Uh, searchable and searchable by him and mm. Shigash target. But never really played him in the Shigash. Uh, one copy of the Gohan and one copy of the Goku. Ooh. Uh, solid rush target in case the early game, in case they're going against uh, another deck that couldn't handle rush. And um, this is another Shigash target. Just like the explosive spirits on Goku's, mm -hmm. and then plus paying two energy in case you have no other play. Bouncing this to hand makes it another live Shigesh play. Okay. Speaking of explosive spirits on Goku, I run four of him. Ooh. Really, really killer. The main play of the game. Oh, absolutely. Definitely the four Shigesh. Shigesh still broke in. Four <laughs> Shigesh is still there. Uh, two copies of March of the Great Eight. In case I saw it and I was able to play it, I played it. Otherwise, it was just energy. Absolutely. There's no reason you shouldn't be playing that. Yeah. Four successor hopes so I get to my combo pieces a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Pretty staple for any oh, kind of lineage absolutely. swap. Or... Four playing Vegeta mm -hmm. was really solid. Literally let you search practically the entire deck, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Time Magic. This was my basically my win con against Gogeta. Mm -hmm. Even when they went to the A drop and then started going for my Brawly, I just negated it and prevented it from standing. And yeah. It really helped me out. This is what scares me when I play it. 
And then the last card was Flying Nimbus, of and course. this card got me wins. Of course. Nimbus is still too good. Nimbus is way too good. All right, so any final thoughts on the deck? Any advice to people who may want to play this? Um, I would advise taking out the King, the Prince Vegeta. I'm actually going to take him out, and I'm probably going to put Carrying Videl in. This deck really lacks hand advantage. Mm -hmm. With the Carrying Videl, I'll gain an hand advantage I won't back. Plus, you'll bump up probably your Brawlies on field and stuff. It just helps out a lot. All right, so any shout-outs then? I know you have a Twitch, at least, right? I, I do have a Twitch. But I have a shout-out. Right, for all well, video gamers. All right, fair enough. Well, thank you for the list, and we hope to see more spiciness coming from the future. Oh, you will.